Once upon a time, from the beginning of time itself, these words have spelt magic. Perhaps because stories epitomize human creativity. They not only reflect the many nuances of life as experienced by us every day, but also, more importantly, the awe-inspiring, limitless fantasies as imagined by the human brain. From the simplicity of grandma's tales to the intricacies of digital storytelling, human creativity has indeed traveled a long way. Welcome to the world of animation, the new age avatar of an age-old craft. When I saw Lion King, I cried. That is the power of animation, that it, it, it can affect anybody. I think because it's universal, you know. I mean, uh, animation uh, uh, has no boundaries with the caste, color or creed. It is the actual movement. And it is the fact that it's not realistic. So there's something very magical. Movement, it would seem, defines life for us. And to be able to create movement is to be able to recreate the essence of life. The way a human being walks, the way a leaf uh, falls off the tree, the way a deer runs, look at our hands, our fingers, you know, all these are very beautiful um, movements. Be it art, ritual, legend or myth, this seemingly obsessive human urge to breathe life into inanimate creations and make them move has been and still is all pervasive. Especially when it involves telling a good story in a manner as real to life as possible. The FUD is actually narrating, it's almost like without technology, you're trying to do an animated film because there are pictures out there and there's a man with a lantern he is reciting a story and taking you from picture to picture. So he is actually trying to show you a movie. Today, when we see the early expressions of such creativity, they do seem quaint. But at that moment in time, they must have seemed a miracle. Just as these images are for us, the magic of our times. Animation itself has a lot to do with technique because we are not exactly doing purely only dealing with art right now because what goes behind is a lot of technologies. Till the last frame, till the final render is done, you would not know how the, f how the film is going to look like. We've come to learn to use technology just like it's a tool. It's like how people used pencils, you know, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. So we use computers in that way today. And we've stopped thinking of technology as being a barrier to doing work. I'm only reined in by my imagination. Magic or technology, call it what you will, but essentially animation celebrates the coming together of human creativity and technological ingenuity to create rich entertainment experiences for everybody. And India, though a relative latecomer to this exciting process, finds herself occupying significant space on the world stage. The growth in the last eight to ten years has been quite astonishing. We now have uh, you know, more than half a dozen animation channels in India. We have movies being made like Hanuman and follow-ups to that. Uh, we are one of the largest exporters of animation as, as a service business uh, to the world market. So the best recognized computer animation on uh, US TV and European TV is done right here in India. French kids can find Mickey Do, uh, Iron Man, uh, Pinky and Perky Show, and they will soon find uh, Little Prince. And uh, we find it very good that French uh, expert and Indian expert of animation work together 
uh, to make happen those fantastic works. According to industry figures, the animation industry in India today is worth 500 million US dollars and growing at an impressive 22%. Indian population is actually a naturally very creative population um, and uh, that creativity you've seen through you know thousands of years of culture and so it's only natural for that creativity to want to express itself through technology and India puts out as far as our numbers tell us more animators per year um, than any other country in the world. There is something that nobody has ever been able to describe is the the natural way in which uh, Indians take to computers. It is something in the DNA that, that begins to uh, uh, become interesting across many different industries. Animation is no different. Indians have got a hunger to improve on things, to understand the world, universal um, or global uh, sensitivities, you know. You need to know English and we have that. That's a big strength for India. The relatively new kid on the block, the gaming industry, is worth $170 million with an annual growth rate of 49% you're going to see a hundred billion dollars in the global animation market in about 2012. In India, we are still uh, going to land up at about a billion dollars if we hit our targets in 2012. And I think that just describes the headroom and the opportunity. It's not just the big companies that are making it, it's also the small companies who are going global and making a mark. I think they realize that the, the global distributed model of development is, is the way of the future. The wonderful thing about the outsourcing model is that the companies basically get paid for going up the learning curve. India just has a very strong work ethic and it always has um, and it's just the nature of, of the, the culture. Uh, and it has a fairly strong client service ethic also. Um, and so as a result, um, that really uh, played into our ability to, to deliver to clients. Even though India at the moment occupies a mere 1% of the world space in figures, most names in the end credits of any successful international animation work are Indian. Because either part of it or all of it has been made in India by Indians. Either as a partner or as a supplier. And we do A to Z, the entire production and the creative production, technical production, everything. We have evolved uh, along with the technology and with the talent pool. Even within the last 10 years, Mickey Mouse has been animated in India. So India is a huge asset and uh, uh, it's a tremendous financial and creative advantage for the West. We got the head of France television, the head of UK television, the head of Nickelodeon, the head of Cartoon Network are all attending for uh, basically to pay homage to the, to the great work coming out of DQ. Today's studios across India are creating work for nearly all international majors. But in what is unique to the Indian experience, in just a short while, most of those who started out a decade ago are now busy embarking on their own creative journeys. I can create a character which is associated with the Indian kids and I wanted to make an Indian superhero. Don't rule out your own home market. One out of every six people in the world is an Indian. More importantly, this large domestic market in the Indian context encourages the Indian idiom and style also to find visibility. We've got more stories than anybody else because we've got such a huge history. Turner's been around in uh, India for over 13 years now and uh, we pioneered the, you know, uh, platform to be offered to the Indian animation uh, fraternity so they can showcase their content on our channel. If you look at last three years of uh, animation uh, activity in India, from 95% of the outsourcing, today we came to close to 75% of the outsourcing. Balance is meant for domestic consumption. With the exciting growth which the animation industry is witnessing, one tends to forget how and when it all began in India. Sometime in the uh, 50s, in the late 50s, uh, the films division, the government of India, uh, decided to set up a cartoon film unit in uh, Bombay uh, to propagate certain ideas in the fire plants. Now they wanted animated films to be made because they felt that this would be the best uh, medium to reach out to rural audiences. 
the animated characters are more generic and therefore probably ideal for films that are meant for a vast uh, country like India. This legacy still lives on, be it health, education, gender or environmental issues. Animation continues to be the chosen tool to get across messages for sensitization and advocacy. Animation has come such a long way. As we see these moving, laughing, colorful images, it does seem impossible that somewhere a human hand with a simple pencil drew the first sketch which gave birth to men. In animation, there are, there are two types of major work. One is uh, which is completely artistic and other is uh, technical. Uh, technical part, I think any, any person can be trained, whereas artistic, of course, is a God-given gift and it cannot be taught. But animation today is touching our lives in more ways than one. Perhaps there is no aspect of communication in which animation is not playing an important role. Most people think animation is only entertainment, but there are a lot of uh, scientific use, educational values for animation. So animations permeated every medium, so it's not as if it's only in gaming or only in advertising. It's, it's, I think it's everywhere because now all our media is dynamic. Taking money out of a bank, booking tickets for a movie or a train, applying for courses or jobs, wherever there is an interactive device, animation plays an important role. Animation has changed the medical profession and how the scientific fraternity thinks and works forever. Indian professionals have made a mark for themselves in this field as well. We probably place ourselves in the top quartile of, of uh, uh, medical graphics companies worldwide and we constantly win business based on the strength of our graphics. Human activity has over time irrevocably impacted the environment. But now, with the help of animated simulation models, satellite imaging, etc., we can accurately assess the impact of anthropogenic activities on the environment. Based on these uh, pictures, no, the satellite pictures and the digital terrain model, which gives a 3D view of that area, and we can uh, animate very nicely. Possibilities are endless. Schools for long were about chalk and talk, but not anymore. Our children, they have grown up in an age and an environment of tremendous stimulation. That's how they learn. You know, that's what hooks them. An ever-increasing growth in demand for distance education translates into a proportional increase in requirement for supportive material, with India fast becoming a hub for its creation. Animation is quite literally constructing liquid architectures in cyberspace. With the boom in uh, uh, construction happened in the last three, four years, India has played a good role in terms of architectural walkthroughs. For long, animation has been used to sell nearly anything worldwide and the Indian advertising industry is no exception. If you look at animation, animation is an art form and advertising is messaging and sometimes it can do a damn good job beyond uh, live action because the possibilities are great. The magic of animation has worked and, the, and with a twist that these are human beings so when people know about that twist they even find it more amusing and they like it even more which is very good. Simple things that you cannot do, uh, you know, in, in live action, which you do in animation and they look so powerful. If you can dream a visual, you can make it in animation. However, with more people shopping on the net, animation is now also being used to help create a whole new shopping experience for them. And I really enjoy the experience of buying online. A quiet evening at home? And you need someone to play Scrabble with? Well, not really. Once upon a time, sports were all about the great outdoors and the indoors, with the outdoor games requiring much more physical activity 
than just wiping the sweat off one's face. Not anymore. All you need is a device, net connectivity, a comfortable chair. And you are, well, gaming. Gaming is, uh, is a very fun, engaging activity. I think the human mind likes to be tickled. It likes to be, uh, it likes, you know, it likes stimulation. And uh, gaming is what we call as an active form of entertainment, uh, as against watching TV. Dhruva is, uh, I think, perhaps the, uh, the only Indian company which has uh, worked with most of the top 20 publishers of games in the world. We work with the companies like Microsoft Game Studios. We work with people like Electronic Arts, the Codemasters, a whole bunch of companies, really. And we've been contributing to some of the biggest games uh, you know, that has been made uh, in the recent times. And uh, I think our clients really come back to us because we do things at a very, very high quality, at a very, very high level of reliability. With such wide application, there is an exponential growth in demand for these images, which means that there is a huge need for a large reservoir of highly skilled, trained people and a matching requirement for investment in infrastructure development. I think we're really uh, focused on building the talent pool. There is no way that this industry can, can achieve its potential unless we have the requisite skill sets. But essentially it is uh, a combination of technology and creativity. So we want to bring in the creative angle to the whole uh, gamut of animation education. We have started Green Gold Academy of Art in Warangal. One of the main reasons for starting this academy in Warangal, even though it's a small town, there's a large pool of artists who come from this region due to uh, a past uh, dynasty, which uh, Kakatiya dynasty in the 16th century, which was very successful. Uh, they encouraged art. There are a lot of young uh, talent available in the country, but they are not suitable for producing that cutting edge, edge creative technology, which is needed to produce uh, Pixar quality or DreamWorks quality. So in 1999, when we started, we actually started with training school. यहाँ पे काफी एक्सपीरियंस लोग हैं, काफी अच्छे एनिमेटर हैं और मुझे उनसे बहुत कुछ सीखने को मिल रहा है। You need to have an institute which teaches animation, not software. While there are many institutes to fulfill industry needs and to provide access to a large number of people aspiring for a career in animation, there are also centers of excellence such as the Industrial Design Center at IIT Mumbai, which are helping bridge the creative versus technical divide. trust here is to teach uh, the basics of animation, the core aspects of animation, what is movement, what is timing, what is animation really all about. It's all about organizing of space and time and uh, really understanding the essence. And I think then the tool becomes a secondary aspect and uh, we, we look at it like that. We're trying to push students to look at animation as uh, a strength that they can develop without really being bogged down by a tool. You put your own thoughts, your expression, your emotions into it and uh, it's like you breathe life into something and it's a wonderful experience. With the help of animation I can actually give life to my characters and my art so I was really interested in doing animation. We're looking uh, to find students who have something to say, you know, something very individual to say. And I think that's the potential we're really looking at. Rather than uh, somebody wanting to fit into the industry and be part of an assembly line, we're hoping that we find thought leaders and people who really push the medium. We are seeing lots of youngsters taking up this field now, uh, doing formal courses in this field and choosing it as a career by their own choice rather than by default. At a recent workshop on animation skills, participants ranged from grandparents to school children. It would seem today in India, it is not just about pursuing a profession in animation, but there is a huge interest in learning animation for a creative high. Which brings us back to the basics. When we discuss the animation industry, is what you have to say more important or how you say it more important? Point which we believe in completely is that what makes a product commercially successful 
is the story you know and if you don't have a good story which connects with the audience you really have lost the plot be the best when it comes to craft but don't start with our story or perhaps it's about none of these not about tools or about softwares not about technologies or production pipelines not even about telling a story but about something more primeval maybe it's about creating new beings and life forms in new worlds perhaps it's about being god even if only for that moment in time yes it's a bit presumptuous to say but it's almost like like playing god you know in the sense uh, because you 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 placing every you're creating a world that's what you do when you make an animation film you're building an entire world and the challenge for all animators and filmmakers is to make a world that is believable so as long as you can dream it and as long as you can imagine it you can create it really well if not then virtually really I really must compliment my brain. Brain, good job. Thank you.